Hello and welcome to Electronics for Absolute Beginners. In this video, we'll design and build a circuit to charge and discharge a capacitor. We'll connect a multimeter to the circuit to see the voltage increase and decrease as the capacitor charges and discharges. And we'll also connect up an oscilloscope to look at the trace generated when the capacitor charges and discharges. So what do we need? Well, we need a breadboard, a battery, and a means of connecting the battery to the breadboard. We also need a 1000 microfarad capacitor, a 470 ohm resistor, a 1 kilo ohm resistor, two push buttons, a diode, an LED, and a few jumper wires. Finally, and these two items are very much optional, you can connect up a multimeter and or an oscilloscope to understand a little bit more about how the circuit is working. So here's the circuit. I think the easiest way to think of it is to view it as two small circuits with the capacitor as the common component in each circuit. The mini circuit on the left is used to charge the capacitor and the mini circuit on the right is used to discharge the capacitor. When switch S1 is closed, current flows around the left hand side of the circuit and charges the capacitor. Once the capacitor is fully charged, current stops flowing around the circuit. This happens when the voltage across the capacitor is the same as that across the battery, about 9 volts. How long it takes to charge the capacitor depends on the value of R1 and the value of the capacitor. You can use a formula to calculate the amount of time it takes to charge a capacitor. Here we can see the waveform produced when a 1 kilo ohm resistor and a 1000 microfarad capacitor are connected in series as in our circuit. Connecting a resistor and capacitor in this way creates what is known as an RC circuit. RC circuits are used extensively in electronics. When S2 is closed, the capacitor starts to discharge its stored energy, which illuminates the LED. When the capacitor is fully discharged, current stops flowing and the LED is no longer illuminated. It's worth noting that capacitors don't fully discharge, in fact, they do hold a small amount of charge, even when you think they're fully discharged. To calculate the amount of time it takes to discharge the capacitor, again use the value of the capacitor and the resistor, 1000 microfarad and 470 ohms this time. So the only component we haven't mentioned so far is the diode. As with the LED, the diode only allows current to flow in one direction. The idea here is to prevent the current from flowing in the wrong direction towards the 1 kilo ohm resistor and battery when the capacitor discharges. In fact, the circuit would work perfectly well without the diode, but it's a good idea, I think, to get into the habit of using a diode to help control how current flows around a circuit. So now that we've designed the circuit, we can build it on a breadboard. Take care to insert the diode, capacitor and LED so that the polarity is correct, otherwise the circuit won't work. Once you've built the circuit, you can use it. To charge the capacitor, press S1 for a few seconds. To discharge it, press S2 for a few seconds. If you have a multimeter, you can see the voltage across the capacitor increase and decrease as buttons S1 and S2 are pressed. Connect the multimeter probes to the capacitor pins. I've used crocodile or alligator clips to make it a bit easier to do this, otherwise you'll need an extra pair of hands.
So when you press S1, you can see the voltage increase. And when you press S2, it decreases. If you've got an oscilloscope, such as this little DS202, you can have a look at the waveform generated when the capacitor is charged and discharged. I'll run through the settings to use at the end of this video. As with the multimeter, connect the probes to the capacitor pins. So these are the settings I used. Thanks very much for watching and if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye.